First of all, thank you to those of you who came uh, correctly to section this morning. Sorry about the change in the section configuration. Uh, but this is how we will do it. We will organize according to studio sections. We will hold the section meetings in studio. And the benefits will be, uh, it'll permit us to be much more hands-on. Um, so it won't just be, just be lectures and multiple choice tests like it was two years ago. And it won't just be lectures, multiple choice tests, and drawing as it was last year. This year, we are optimistic that uh, we're very uh, looking forward to seeing what happens when we have lectures, multiple choice, drawings, and hands-on exercises in studio. So um, this is what uh, we're doing. Um, the, the, the students who met today uh, did sex, sketch one. Did we talk about that just now? Okay. Um, as was probably just said, sketch one uh, is available in learning module one, which to you on Blackboard looks like one building forms. And you can download it from there, and you can print it, uh, draw the exercise, Please do not forget to write your name and your section number on the piece of paper. Uh, and then you will be scanning it and uploading it and submitting it on Blackboard to Assignment 1, Sketch 1. Uh, and that is uh, really, uh, the first one is just a practice to get you familiar with uh, drawing by hand, scanning it, and submitting it in the proper resolution format uh, to Blackboard. And it's a pass-fail exercise. We have a question over here. Yes, Professor Kamal. Please use a lens that is an HP or softer. Please like the uh, keep it sharp. Okay. So it's interesting, um, the first lecture covered many of the things, touched on many of the things uh, that we uh, turn to in greater depth in this lecture, um, and even use some of the same examples. Uh, this lecture focuses on foundations. Uh, the prior version of this lecture was one and a half to two hours long, uh, so please forgive me if this one seems a little bit rushed. There's still some adjusting to be done to uh, fit the format. So um, it's actually useful that you have seen these things before. Um, one could not ask for a more dramatic uh, example, more dramatic demonstration of what happens when you get this wrong. Um, the first thing we're going to do uh, uh, today is to talk about forces. Uh, as we did last Tuesday. Uh, this course, as we described in the introduction, is organized first and foremost around uh, actual physical construction methods and materials, actual physical assemblies uh, that you will be running into time and time again as you uh, move through your careers two-by-fours, concrete blocks, cast-in-place concrete, pre-cast concrete, steel frames, all of these things, uh, flashings, <coughs> roof membranes, these are the building blocks of buildings. Um, and the course in general moves from the physical to the abstract and the principles. Uh, and on the side of the principles, uh, we will be tapping into uh, the deep experience that you have accumulated uh, up to this point in high school, mathematics and physics, and in the physics and math courses that you took last year. And so you will recognize this from your physics class. These are representations of physical objects, uh, and then they are juxtaposed with representations of abstractions, of forces. Forces are not a thing. Uh, they're not physical objects, but they are physical. 
and it is very useful to draw them. And so in your drawings, in the sketch exercises, and in your notes, and uh, in your careers, we encourage you to make a very clear distinction between the way you draw objects and the way you draw abstractions, abstract forces. And this is not a good example. Uh, the line weights of the objects are more or less the same as the, uh, the line weights of the abstract forces. We encourage you to, to do better than this, to actually uh, do things with your line weights that makes a very clear distinction between objects and forces. Now on the topic of forces, uh, I'm looking for an object. Let's do this. Newton's third law of motion is printed on your lecture sheet. Uh, Newton's third law, you've heard it before. You probably have experienced it extensively. Uh, if you've ever ice skated or uh, rollerbladed or skateboarded or had a cat and threw the cat in the air, uh, it's a very familiar phenomena uh, and very familiar words, and it's simply a matter of putting the words and the phenomena together to understand an architectural, to develop an architectural understanding of this. So the words go something like this. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, reaction is a very carefully chosen term in that phrase. Uh, and that's the phrase, that's the word we will be using in this course and in architecture in your careers, is there are reactions. Um, we know that this waste paper basket is pushing down because we have lived a long time and we know about gravity. We don't know what causes gravity, no one knows what causes gravity, but we're familiar with what it means. It means we stick to the floor and that waste basket is stuck to that table. There is a force of gravity. We measure that force in the United States in pounds and ounces. And so there is a force pushing down on the table. Now if we take, now the key question now is, does the table push back? Well, let's try an experiment. Did anyone see the table jump upward when I removed the force down? No. So one, one would be forgiven for thinking that the table is not pushing back, it's just sitting there. This is the hard part. Newton's third law tells us, no, the table is pushing back. For every force, the weight of the waste paper basket down, there is an equal an opposite reaction force pushing up. Why doesn't that equal and opposite reaction force pushing up cause the table to jump when I remove the waste paper basket? Here's why. The force of the waste paper basket pushing down is an external force. The force of the table pushing back is an internal force. So there is a distinction between external forces, me pushing on the wall, and internal forces, those little molecules of the wall, those, that surface, that formica surface of the table, those molecules act like springs. Imagine tiny little springs, molecular scale springs. They are compressing ever so slightly. And when something compresses, it also pushes back. It's hard to see it in solid surfaces because they compress so slightly that you can't see it compress. But the challenge of this lecture, the first challenge of this lecture, is to picture this in your mind at the molecular level. Those molecules of the table are acting like little springs. They are compressing ever so slightly, and because they are compressing, they are also pushing back. 